So what we've got at the moment is our pattern inside the read drum sequencer, but what you need to do is get it into the main sequencer so that we can work with it a bit more flexibly. Because at the moment, we can't see any of the notes, we can't do much with it in the context of a song. So there are two ways to do this. The first way is to select the pattern that you want to put into the sequencer and then choose edit, copy pattern to track. And what that does is it places a MIDI clip between the left and right locators containing the notes that you programmed. And you can see that because it's a drum machine, the velocities are all extremely even. There's none of the variation that you get when you play in by hand. And you can mess about with these. You can drag them up or down using the pencil tool if you want. Uh, but the programming the read drum in that way is is one way to achieve a very, very mechanical sort of sound by only using those three velocity settings that it has. That's one way of doing it. I come out of edit mode. I'm just going to undo that and show you another way of doing it. Because that gives us nicely editable MIDI notes that we can work with. You might not necessarily want to do that. You might prefer to work with pattern data. And that sort of, it's a bit simpler because it gives you blocks of pattern data, as you will see, rather than MIDI notes. If you right click on the redrum sequencer lane and choose create pattern loop lane, you'll see that the pattern box gets a green outline, which means it's effectively been automated, although you haven't done anything yet. And if you take the pencil tool and you draw in a block of data and then a second block of data, and then go back to the pointer tool, what you will see is that these blocks of data contain information telling the reason which pattern to play back. So this one's telling it to play back pattern A1. And we can change this one to make it say, please play back pattern A2. So if I now turn that back on, because it needs to be on. You'll now see the pattern change. So you get the idea with that, and that would work with any of these 32 patterns here. You could tell reason to play back any bank and any pattern at any point. And they don't have to be four, you can have them as long or as short as you want. The only disadvantage with that is that it doesn't allow you to do any MIDI processing uh, directly on the, on the notes themselves because everything's held inside the read drum. So if you wanted to use the regroove, which we're going to have a look at next, it makes more sense to uh, have them as MIDI notes in the sequencer. You don't have to. Uh, you can still assign, you can assign your pattern based beats to a regroup channel, as we'll see in a second. Uh, and even then, once you've done that, you can still, you're still able to convert pattern automation to notes, which takes this pattern data and turns it back into notes anyway. So it's pretty flexible, I mean, it really depends how you want to work. You can do it in a number of different ways. None of them are necessarily better than others. They have relative strengths and weaknesses. But that is essentially how you would do it. Of course, the other really obvious way you could program a beat, if I just set the left and right locators there, is to just play it in by hand from a MIDI keyboard. You could forget all that if you wanted, and you can just play it in. So if I switch on a click, going, wind it back to before the start, and 
there's our pot. If I quantize that, 